Welcome. All right, so you made it to the summary of your course, Solving a Quadratic by Completing the Square. So what I want to do is just spend a little time, you know, kind of talking through again the method of completing the square, and as well as kind of going through some tips and tricks and some common mistakes. Now, this is the one that I prefer. It's not necessary like it is with factoring, but one of the tips or tricks that I like to do when completing the square is to set equal to 0. Okay, So set everything equal to 0, and then you can go ahead and complete the square. Now, it's not necessary because, again, all we need to do is create that perfect square. But it is something that is, uh, is going to be very helpful when you're using your inverse operations. Um, a common mistake um, that I see is you know, one of your tips and tricks, remember that your a has to equal 1. So not factoring for a equals 1. Um, and your a really just needs you to be a perfect square. But when we want to set, when we're completing the square, we want to get our a, which is our factor of our coefficient, to be equal to 1. So one of the tips and tricks, you know, make sure you factor that out of those first two terms the way that I like to go through it, rather than factoring, rather than not factoring out and then trying to complete the square that way. So it's a little bit of tip and tricks. And one thing, a common mistake that I see with students is they don't factor out and then they try to complete the square after that, which makes it very difficult. Because remember, the whole process of completing the square, the big thing that we do, b divided by 2 squared. The reason why we do that is we add on both sides is because that creates our perfect square. So the next couple common mistakes is not adding b, b divided by 2 squared to both sides. All right. Now, a, kind of a quick little thing to go over this again. If I had x equals 4, if I add 1 to both sides, that equation is still valid. And also, another couple ways to teach it that I've gone through, you can also add 1 and subtract 1 to the same side. It doesn't really matter. I teach it really both ways. Um, but that is a very common mistake that students will just add it and maybe forget to subtract it, or add it on one side and forget to add it to the other side. So that's a very um, big mistake that I see a lot of students make. <clears throat> uh, another really common mistake they go through is you're factoring your perfect square. And this is one thing that I talked about in the what are the things that you need to know for this. Um, you have to know your perfect squares. Not because what we're going to do is we're going to be creating perfect square trinomials. You have to know how to factor a perfect square trinomial into a binomial square. So factoring a perfect square is a common mistake that students have because they forget how to factor perfect square trinomials. So that's become very, very important um, to make sure that you're doing that correctly. And you know, really, as far as your tips and tricks, you set equal zero. You do that. Make sure you get it both on both sides. Um, that's really about as, as much as I have for the different squares. For the common mistakes, you're factoring your perfect squares. The other thing that I would see is using your square root method. Um, so when you're solving, so you have a binomial squared. You know, now you isolate your variable. You have to do your square root method by using your inverse operations and using the reverse order of operations. And what I mean by this is you're going to get an equation that's going to look like this. Maybe 5 equals x minus 3 squared minus 2. Right? It'll have something like this. Well, you've got to use your inverse operations, which would be to undo. So we want to isolate this x. But the first thing we need to do is add by 2 first. And then I have 7 equals x minus 3 squared. And now we've got to use the square root method, which is going to be taking the inverse of this and taking the square root. Now, when you take the square inverse, uh, or the square root, which is your inverse operation, you have to make sure you include the plus and the minus. So therefore, this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 7 equals x minus 3. Then I can add the 3 to the other side, and that's how I solve my equation. So a lot of students, when they do the square root method, always forget that addition and subtraction. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a quick little summary of solving a quadratic by completing the square. Thanks.